Hello. I have no seat. I know. I know. It has been a hot second since I sat here down and just talked about something. Anyway, it's been quite mad this year <laughs> because I have this like super important exams this summer uh, because my last year of high school. I just thought of popping in here and doing a little video just to show you guys that I'm here. I haven't abandoned this channel, not one bit. I just really don't have time this year. Like it's been crazy. But let's leave all that stuff aside and i'll share with you today the books we bought i bought we bought anyway uh during january because um there's some books that i'm really excited for and they're really special i don't know so i thought of sharing them with you so let's go okay first book is the alchemist oh my god i've missed this so much <gasps> it's the alchemist by I'll try and read the name. Um, um, yeah, that's the name, however, in case I don't read it right. Paolo Coelho. I hope. Don't hold it against me, I don't know. Anyway, The Alchemist basically is, uh, is a story about self-discovery and traveling. And uh, we follow this boy, Santiago, who wants to travel along the world to find this world with treasure. Uh, and it basically combines like this feeling of following your dreams and listening to your heart and this book was bought by my bigger sister and uh, it's been a book it's a book that I had heard of and I was kind of curious about it, but I never thought of buying it but well I guess I have it now so I can read it um, but yeah it seems like a book that like an eye-opener I don't know it was like the vibes that it it's, kind of, it's the kind of book that will give you food for thought. So I'm really excited to read this as soon as I can. So yeah, let's go to the next one. The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. This book uh, basically is a book that combines modernity with myth. It's set in the 19th century. And, and in this book, the main character, uh, stricken by the death of her husband, she moves in the countryside, she retires there with her son. Uh, seeking like this low life in the countryside but then uh, she hears these stories in this place about this creature roaming the swamps of uh, Essex and she really is uh, thrilled because she considers this like a new species and so she wants to find dance and she wants to find answers and she starts searching about clues I can't talk anymore I really like <sighs> and she s starts searching for clues and her beliefs uh, go against the ones of um, the Reverend of Old Winter, uh, who wants to give some explanations that have a more religious point of view. And in this like search for answers, they are drawn together despite their differences and despite their different point of views and despite their different like beliefs and everything about this monster. They are drawn together, changing their lives uh, of one another in so so many ways. So this book is, seemed really interesting. I had no idea that this book ever existed. <laughs> but my mom bought it one day uh, from the supermarket, actually. Um, but it really seems like so interesting. And let's just give a second of silence to this amazing cover. Ten seconds. <laughs> okay, that's enough. So yeah. Next book is a book I had found this summer. But uh, I really didn't buy it because there were so many books that I wanted to buy and I didn't know where to start. So I ended up not buying anything, basically, from those books that I had seen that period of time. Uh, anyway, this book is called Gallant. And it's, all <laughs> right, <laughs> Gallant uh, by V.E. Schwab. I'm going to read the blurb from behind uh, because it really delivers, like, the whole story of this and it's gorgeous. 14-year-old Olivia Pryor is missing three things, a mother, a father, and a voice. Her only companions are the gowls she sees and her mother's journal, which captured a mind in turmoil. Until she receives a letter from an uncle she's never met, summoning her to his estate, Gallant. But when she arrives, she discovers her uncle is dead, and the estate is empty, save for her cousin Matthew and the servants. Gallant is a house of secrets, a house sitting in lonely vigil. A place where the gowls are powerful, 
As Olivia searches for answers about her family, her past, she discovers the dark reflection of everything she knew, an ancient realm where ghosts take form, and the dark master sits waiting for her. As you saw in uh, the clips, uh, there are so many beautiful illustrations. I'm so glad we have it now because, like, I don't know, I just love it. And it also reminds me kind of Crimson Peak. Like, it has this sort of vibe. It gives me that sort of vibe of Crimson Peak. If you haven't watched this movie, I totally suggest you to watch it, especially, especially if you like gothic things, all gothic things. That movie is one of my favorite movies ever. So, next book. Oh, hold on. This needs a change of setting. Once upon a time, a girl named Sophie rode into the forest with the Queen's Huntman. Her lips were the color of ripe cherries. Her skin, as soft as new fallen snow. Her hair, as dark as midnight. When they stopped to rest, the Huntman pulled out his knife and took Sophie's heart. <laughs> there had been rumors. Everybody said she was a waste of a princess, and Sophie believed them. These poisonous wars that kept her from becoming powerful. So this book is called Poisoned, and it's basically that this retelling of Snow White. Uh, if you didn't get it, <laughs> but you did. This dark twist of Snow White. It it just turns upside down everything we know about Snow White. She is more empowered. She and she's not this delicate girl which we. Uh, who we knew uh, up to now. I love retellings. I really love retellings, but um, I have re never read a retelling about Snow White, so this should be interesting. I hope you enjoyed the little montage I did there. Romeo and Juliet. I actually have already a copy of Romeo and Juliet, but this one also has like little side notes, uh, which is really helpful because sometimes you really don't get what Shakespeare means. Ooh, another book I'm so, so, so excited about, which I bought uh, this month, the previous month is February now. If I Survive by Holly Jackson, by the way, Poisoned by Jennifer Donnelly, the retelling I was talking to you about. If I Survive by Holly Jackson. Uh, this book talks about six friends who are going on a road trip with an RV, but the RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere, so that's basically the perfect setting for a thriller. And guess what? That's what happens, because there is a sniper out in the dark who is willing to kill to find out the secrets, actually a secret, which one of the six friends is hiding. So in this game of cat and mouse, only one thing is sure. Not everyone will survive the night. Also, like, if you stay inside, let's count it down on hours, 10 p.m. and so on. And so it's really exciting. And I imagine already, like, the building up of tension in this book. So it will be really nice to read. Last but not least, is also this collection of ghost stories. Uh, these are actually Greek authors, uh, but there are really cool uh, illustrations in this book too. It's actually the last book we bought in January, uh, but it's really cute. There's, there's these little phantoms over here that are adorable, and if you can see, there's also a big phantom like right here, which looks like the moon, but it's not. And so uh, interesting because like uh, in the stories, there are some questions answered about like uh, if ghosts are afraid of people and uh, if a ghost can be called uh, at the bottom of a, a well and stuff like that. That's it for today. I think that this video was such a mess but bear with me I haven't done one of these in such a long time so I have kind of lost my touch. I hope I get it back once I get back to it um, for good. So that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next time. Bye!